Radio today is growing rapidly and much faster than the U.S. economy. Does that mean the industry's salesmen are doing a great job? I'm not so sure. I'm Miles David, and as president of Radio Advertising Bureau, it's my responsibility to direct a team of radio salesmen. I think our work has been made infinitely easier by some people whose area is very far removed from the world of media facts and figures. I'm talking about the creative geniuses who have come along in the commercial production field in the late 50s and 60s. More than anyone else, they've taught the advertiser how to communicate with the radio audience in today's terms and in the natural style of radio. We know the audience thinks of radio as a presence, something in between a companion and a town crier. Radio is there. It's comforting. It's fun. And it's a necessity, a link to what's happening. Obviously, a medium that is all of these things ought not to beat at you suddenly at the command of the advertiser. Its advertising ought to communicate in the same pleasant way as its programming. This is what radio's new wave of commercial producers began to show us in the 50s. Bob and Ray have been leaders in the new wave. They're as warm, varied, humorous, as human as radio itself, and that's why we think their work ought to be collected in an album, which is very representative of their best and of radio's best. Incidentally, we're grateful to Ray, who posed for the woodcut on the cover of the album. He's the man at the front door. Bob can be seen in the background, already shot down. Seriously, we think Bob and Ray helped shoot down a type of advertising that pounded but had a lot less chance of getting in than the radio commercials of today, which we believe lead every other advertising form in their ability to communicate humanly and to motivate the consumer. Hello, everybody. This is Radio's Wally Ballou. On uh, one of our principal thoroughfares, getting the opinions of people on radio today, what radio means to them. Sir, I wonder if I could speak with you for just a moment. Yeah. My name's Wally Ballou. We're on the radio. I've heard of you. I'll <laughs> just refer to you as Mr. X, if I may. Well, that's good, because that's my name. Uh, sir, do you listen to the radio very much? Oh, you got the wrong guy. I'm a, I'm a TV man. No, uh -huh. uh, very little radio. Well, I tell you, I have a clock radio that gets me up in the morning. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, Listen a little bit yeah, before I, breakfast while you're right. shaving. While I'm shaving, and then I get the time and the weather and uh, the traffic and what to look for and from the radio. But you, you commute to work? Uh, I drive in. What kind of work do you do? I'm a shrimp diviner in one of the big restaurants here in town. That's I, interesting. Uh, I take uh, the shrimp and I take that black thing out of yes, it. Yes, yes. And I put that in a separate dish from the, uh, the shrimp I've just cleaned. And I have a... A little radio by the black dish where I put the other stuff. I have a little radio there to play music in the background. Well, I too. suppose you'd kind of go crazy uh, debating trip all day if you didn't have something to listen to. That's right. It's pretty uh, pretty tiring. Uh, At the end of the day, I don't suppose you go home and ask your wife for a shrimp cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> no, they always say that. They always say, I bet you hate shrimp. Yeah. And, uh, actually, you know, it's not the case. I, I like shrimp. I still like to eat them. Isn't that interesting? You say you drove home. Do you listen to the radio when you drive in? Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, you know, I want to get a lineup on the car. traffic and yeah. Uh, and like that. Now after dinner, uh, that's when you watch TV, huh? No, not as a rule. I'm uh, I'm quite a hobbyist. Uh, I have a shop down in the basement. I like to go down there and make things uh, out of oh. glass, bottles, wood, ships. Uh huh. And uh, and I like to shellac fish. That yes, I've, uh, I've seen them out on the wall. Things of that sort. I've uh, shellacked uh, twelve dozen uh, shrimp and put it on a plaque. It's really pretty. Isn't it? It's nice. Uh, can you watch TV while you're working in your shop? No, I have a little radio down there where I listen to music and the news. As I How many hours of, of an evening do you put well, in? Well, let's see. I get down there after dinner about 8 o'clock, and uh, I come up around after the 11 o'clock news and head to bed. Head for the right. sack. Well, sir, you've uh, given me a pretty good account of your entire day, and I don't know whether you know it or not, but uh, you've listened to radio from about the time you get up until you go to bed, and no mention of TV. When do you watch television? I've never missed a football game on the tube. This is multifaceted reporter Wally Ballou speaking from the offices of two of the nicest guys in show business, certainly two of the most talented, as well as being my employers, Bob and Ray. Uh, you forgot to mention we're also punctures of pomposity, uh -huh. but uh, never mind. Thank you, Wally, and we're glad to have this chance to talk to some of the people in advertising and broadcasting. The RAB people suggested, since we've been connected with what we're told are successful humorous radio commercials for some time, you might be interested in some of our thoughts on the subject. Our commercial business, Goulding Elliott Graybaugh Incorporated, began uh, ten years ago following the initial success of the Peel's Beer, Bert and Harry commercials. They were the legendary Bert and Harry commercials, right? Thanks, Wally. One of our first jobs was for General Motors Guardian Maintenance through DP Brother Agency of Detroit. We didn't know at the time 
that it was to be one of our most durable accounts. And here's how Jim Orgill of DP Brother described to an IRTS commercials workshop audience how the campaign came about. Take your GM car back to your dealer for a quality service. That's the basic selling premise. It was born when somebody took a hard look at a falling service sales curve and decided that something had to be done to change its direction. For a five-year period prior to this time, the General Motors share of the automotive service market had been steadily shrinking. During that same period, the competition, service stations and garages, were gaining at the rate of about 10% each year. The agency proposed an advertising campaign in magazines, newspapers and radio. General Motors bought it and we were on our way. Before we went on the air, we concluded that the subject of car service was as interesting as nuts and bolts. <clears throat> so we decided to keep the copy points to a minimum, leaving time for devices to get and hold attention. Spots were built around music, sound effects, dramatic situations, humorous situations, character voices, and even limericks. Bob and Ray were signed up the first year to become a regular part of this mix. The humorous approach became more and more predominant as we went along simply because we got playback when we played it for laughs. Meanwhile, Bob and Ray began to take over more and more of the commercials, again, simply because we got more playback from them than anyone else we used. Our association with GM has resulted in nearly 150 Guardian maintenance commercials since the inception of the campaign. We had a lot of fun putting together many of the Guardian maintenance spots, and here's one that stands out as a particular favorite of ours. Time again for Tim and Jim, Guardian Maintenance Men, brought to you by your Chevrolet car and truck, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, and GMC truck dealer. Joining the boys, an old friend has just driven in. Say, Jim, isn't that our old friend Harvey, who writes children's stories? Hi, Harvey. Hi, Tim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Tim and Jim. Can we help you? Yes, this is my car. My car is red. See my red car? Yes, uh, what about it? I am going away. I am going away in my red car. Go, car, go. Well, Harvey, you probably want our summer travel special then. Yes, I would like your summer travel special. Maybe a quality engine tune-up? It's another of our featured Guardian Maintenance summer services. Yes, yes. And we're also installing seat belts, rotating tires, and balancing wheels. See my dog Spot? My dog Spot is in my red car. I love to run and play with Spot. The pretty red car will go good. When will the red car be ready? When the big hand is on 12 and the little hand is on 5. The best of Bob and Ray's humor seems to flow out of them naturally, almost organically. And working with them is a low-key experience. You call them to set up a recording date a month ahead of time, giving them the copy points to be covered in the next flight of spots. There is no further communication until you fly into New York and meet them on the date set at their combination office and studio. You engage in 10 minutes of quiet conversation, none of which concerns the job to be done. Bob and Ray then take their positions at the mic and run through one of their creations. If you request a change, there's a quiet discussion and it's made. Take one. A second and third take are made to bring the spot in on time and it's done. Total time, about 15 minutes. In about an hour then, Bob and Ray have recorded four commercials. It was in the kind of atmosphere I have described that Bob and Ray quietly and casually started reading what to me is one of the funniest and at the same time most commercial commercials of all time. Now, as a service of your Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, and GMC truck dealer, here is a list of names of people in this area who have not brought their vehicles in regularly for the important services as recommended in their owner protection plan. Most have already done so, but those who haven't know who they are and we know who you are. Here's the first group. Morris Claremont, Arthur Skirmahorn, Helen Harkness, Frederick von Berkowitz, T. Wilson Messy, Joan Antonsich, Gilbert Arian, Al Schaefer, and Linda Larkey. Stanford Jewell, Ole O'Leahy, Mary Magoon, and Harmon Myers. This list includes those people who are due for the recommended services in their owner protection plan. Calvin Hoogevin, Joseph Cabibbo, Natalie Attired, Melvin DiGiacomo, Shirley Schechten Lucengard. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Clifford Fleming, William Heberling, Mary Backstage, Akbar Maitai. Bring your car in now for your recommended Guardian Maintenance Services and avoid the embarrassment of being reminded on the air. Thank you. Very shortly after the campaign was started, sales which had been declining for five years began to rise. And they have continued to rise. Four years after the campaign began, the rate of growth of General Motors service volume surpassed the rate of growth in the industry, 
and that trend has continued also. In our current Bob and Ray commercials for the General Electric Lamp Department, it was mutually decided between BBD&O, their agency, and ourselves to use a central continuing character in all the spots. We felt that the use of a regular character would provide continuity between the company, its slogan, and its product. We selected one of the many members of our Bob and Ray staff, old-time announcer Kent Lyle Birdley, as the one to proclaim, light makes the difference in business and GE makes the difference in light. We headed up our presentation reel of commercials with this interview, uh, a device, incidentally, we have frequently employed to introduce a client to our suggested spokesman. Frequently, too, the client will use this interview to preview advertising plans at sales meetings. Are we on yet? Yes, uh, the mics are on now. <laughs> Talking with uh, Kent Lyle Birdley, who's been with the Bob and Ray staff for, well, just how many years now? Uh, has well, it that's now? 12 going on 13, Ray. And not too unlucky, I might point out, because you have been chosen, of all the members of our staff, to uh, be a spokesman for GE in the uh, large lamp division. Well, I certainly am most pleased at the appointment, and I, I feel that my feature highlights and sidelights on the world of illumination should certainly be of help to you and to General Electric. Well, a lot of people would like to know a bit more about you. Well, you just fire away, and All I'll right. be happy to answer any questions you may have. You've been a radio announcer for a good many years. Uh, just when did you start in the business? Well, I started back in the late 20s in Chicago at the time, and I was befriended by Chester Hasbrook Frisbee. I think you remember him as the great haired animal act announcer. He also did a lot of whistling programs around that period. He got me an audition, and my career began. What was your first big show, do you recall? Well, the first one uh, in Chicago was... Uh, the Little Show. I don't know if you remember that or not. I announced it, of course. Then it came High, Low, and Dandy. I think that was yeah. the favorite. The Market Street Quiz was one of the first uh, out-of-studio broadcasts that I had. Man on the Street type of thing. Uh, anything interesting happened to you uh, during one of those Man on the Street programs? Yeah. Well, I had several... I've heard several... so many stories down through the years. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing interesting happened in those days to me. How's Paula? Paula Dickinson, she yes. was. Well, wasn't she a, a society figure out there in, in Meat Chicago. Town? That's mm -hmm. right. And uh, we have a lovely family, two daughters, and uh, Kent Jr., my son. Kent must be, what, three or four now, I guess. My goodness, no. Kent's 27 now, Ray. Time really flies, doesn't it? You know, warming up to this interview, I hadn't been heard from uh, much in the 40s, and that's a time of my yes. life I don't care much to discuss. Anyway... That brings us right up to when... That's when uh, you we heard contacted me. you. Uh -huh. uh, you brought back a, a memory uh, to Bob and myself, and uh, we got on the phone and said, come and join us at our big, sumptuous uh, office uh, in New York. And do the General Electric commercials. And I was really thrilled, and I am. And I want to thank you for this new work that you've given me. What will you uh, call this uh, campaign? Well, I proposed? think we're going to title the series roughly Highlights and Sidelights on the World of Illumination. Illumination. Would you imagine that I will need to order a new tuxedo for these new commercials? Well, I uh, haven't seen. H how old is the one you have This now? is the one I started out with. This is a tuxedo? Well, it was a tuxedo once. There's not too much left of it. And I wear, of course, this four-in-hand tie with it now. Yeah. Well, I'd suggest you probably get a new one. Uh, and, you know, the styles have changed so completely, really. Uh, yes, since but since if, you wear a, if you wear a style long enough, I've discovered it comes back. These wide lapels are due for a resurgence. Yes, but... You know, it's kind of faded, and it's kind of worn at the elbow. And well, it's the, the first tuxedo I've ever seen with a leather patch on it. The leather patch is from the 40s. Is it? I wonder where the label... What's the label in there? Wait a minute. This says rental. Return to I.J. Fox, I Fremont don't, Street, Boston. I don't think he's missed it. <laughs> well, Maybe that's where I was in the for... 40s. Now we know where you've been. Okay, it's been swell talking to you, Thank Kent. you, Ray, and, and Bob, too, and all of your staff. I'm Wonderful. thrilled to be working with you once again. Well, and I know uh, GE folks are, too. Kent Lyle Birdley. Good night, everyone. Having gotten to know Kent, one is prone to be more receptive when hearing the commercials for the first time. Hello, I'm old-time radio announcer Kent Lyle Birdley with another success story for the General Electric Lamp Department. Hello. I'm in the controller's office at the Sayar Company, the world's largest maker of tongue depressors. I'm the controller. I understand you've had lighting problems here at your plant. Uh, yes, the tongue depressors have been coming through shabby, and we also had problems here in accounting. Now, uh, see this weekly payroll check? Yes, it's for $960. Well, uh, that was mistakenly issued to our office boy. 
And uh, this one for forty three fifty went to our president, Mr. Sayar. <laughs> uh, it was then that uh, an efficiency expert was called in. Well, what did he do? Well, he said, somebody turn on the lights. And uh, they were already on. Well, I suppose he then prescribed proper general electric bulbs and fluorescents for all your plant and office needs. Right. Everything improved, including the workers' morals. Uh, let me see that, Tom. That's worker morale. Oh, well, they haven't fixed the lighting in my office yet. They're going to do that next oh, week. That's okay. We're on tape anyway. We can cut it out. Good. These commercials are aimed at businessmen. Uh, Kent, how have the GE spots gone over? Why ask me, Ray? Ask Bill Rogers, GE's supervisor of advertising and sales production of commercial and industrial lamps. Can he get that all on his door? When you sponsor Bob and Ray, you start with a loyal fan club. Seems like everybody likes Bob and Ray. That's one of the real bonuses a sponsor gets with them. And in our case, that's just what we wanted. A bonus that's merchandisable to the trade. A bonus that immediately makes customers like your advertising. A bonus that makes people talk about your advertising. And that talk value is important. Rarely is an advertiser able to measure his effort in a direct payoff in sales, especially in industrial and commercial products such as ours. But you can hear talk. Talk by your salesman, talk by your distribution, talk by your customers. And that's what Bob and Ray are doing for us, giving us talk value. Light makes the difference in business, and GE makes the difference in light. Hello, this is Kent Lyle Birdley for your General Electric Lamp Department, chatting with friendly neighborhood supermarket manager, Ferris Gallagher. You had some trouble here recently. Well, it's been a continuing thing. My big problem here is these skinny people who come in and go out looking lumpy with picnic hams under their coats. Oh, I see. Another trick they use is to take a ketchup bottle and empty the ketchup into their pocket and put the ketchup bottle back on the shelf. And By the takes... time they're out in the parking lot... The ketchup bottle is drained and looks white, but they're gone. Too late. But then you install GE Deluxe White Mercury Lamp. Yes, it's so beautifully lit out there now, I can see them unloading their ill-begotten booty into their cars. Yes, for the first time, people can look good under mercury lamps with new GE Deluxe White Mercury Lamps. Another trick they uh, did was exchange your butter and margarine in the boxes. Go out uh, with the margarine, with butter and margarine boxes, pay the margarine prices. Why, that's terrible. Tomorrow's special, three number 10 cans, Ford Hook Lima Beans, 84 cents. At a recent trade show, the director of purchasing of one of America's largest corporations came over to me and said simply, I'd like to tell you how much I enjoy your Bob and Ray radio commercials. I thanked him, but expressed my surprise that being as sophisticated a customer as he, he would find these non-technical commercials interesting. He just replied, never mind that. I like Bob and Ray. I like your commercials. I like your product. Now, if any of you listening are fellow ad managers, then I have to ask you, how often has one of your top customers or prospects sought you out to praise your advertising? Well, I'll tell you, it hasn't happened to me nearly often enough. Now, we can't measure Bob and Ray, add them, multiply, and divide by two to tell you how much they've increased sales. We do know that our radio advertising effort is pulling a commercial awareness some 30% higher than we had originally targeted. We do know that Bob and Ray have a magical merchandising appeal. They do create talk value. We do know that our sales have not gone down, and indeed they have increased. And besides, you know, it's just plain fun to work with Bob and Ray. Frequently, when practical, we employ a member of our Bob and Ray staff to act as spokesman for a product or service. Try as we might, however, we've never been able to work our educational director, Webley Webster, into commercials. Once, though, he went out and got a job on his own. Here's how he broke the news on one of our radio shows. Here's Webley Webster. Hi, friends. everybody. Webley, you seem to be in a gay, ebullient mood. Is there any particular reason for it? Bob, I've uh, embarked on what I think will be a new career for me. A new career? What is a career you embarked on? Uh, I do commercials, Bob. Oh, you mean you have already done some? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, I haven't been on the air yet. They're going to start next week. So well, you far. know, this is a great... going to test them. It's a wonderful career, and I'm very happy that you've been able to get this kind of work. What kind are they? Uh, we well, the, uh, we've just uh, finished uh, doing a commercial for the uh, Lap Master Paper Napkin Paper. The Lap Master Paper Napkin Company? Right. Uh, and, uh, is that a tape? Do you have a copy of it there with you, a, a tape? That's right. It's a, a recording tape of it? Yes. Rather than explain it... 
uh, in a way which might be difficult to understand. Why don't we hear this commercial and uh, see right. just what you do? Then we uh, I think, uh, Bob, I should preface it to say that I have gone in very heavily for the test method. Mm -hmm. I think showing the uh, the public outright just what your product does, I think it was very good. Well, have they asked you for your opinions or? What? It's a thing to do. It's a thing to do. Yeah. Right. All right, so if you'd play the commercial number okay. one. Okay. It has uh, Commercial number one, John. Fire. Hi, this is Webley L. Webster, and I'm standing in the testing laboratory of the Neat Hole Institute. With me is Chief Tester Theodore Drav. What's going to happen, Mr. Drav? Well, we're going to see if the Lapmaster paper napkins live up to their claim of staying on a person's lap in a hurricane. If it qualifies, we'll award the product the Neat Home Institute plaque. Well, how will this test work? We're stepping into a special wind tunnel, Mr. Webster, we have here at the Institute, at the far end of which are seated eight people. Four of them have Lapmaster napkins on their laps, the others ordinary make napkins. I see. And then you will turn on the wind in the tunnel and see which napkins remain on the laps. Exactly, Mr. Webster. Here goes. <laughs> Wowee, sir, what a blast. Now I'm going down with Mr. Drive to check to see the napkins. Well, here we are, Mr. Webster. The napkins are still on the laps of the Lapmaster people and completely have disappeared from the others. Amazing. Propositive, folks. That Lapmaster napkins will stay on your laps even in a hurricane. Buy a box today and one for your living room, too. Well, that, uh... That was the commercial web, huh? That's the one we, we'll be hearing next That's year. Right. Do you like it? Yeah. It's dramatic. It shows there. It certainly is dramatic. It sounds phony as phony can be. Well, if it's already been filmed and it, and it did it work, did those napkins really stay on the on the people's laps and yeah. blow off the other ones? Stayed on you. Uh, yeah, just stayed on four. Well, mm -hmm. That's really wonderful how they can oh, uh, I don't make a product like that. Really, now, Webley, how'd you get them to stay on, really? Yeah. Well, four of them were wearing sticky pants. Oh, you mean this whole thing is a put-up deal? It was deal? mostly jelly. Oh, no wonder they didn't blow off in the wind tunnel. And yeah. I think that's kind of uh, uh, unethical advertising. I think you're associated with a shady product, young man. Well, why don't you play the stupid theme for me as I go off? Doodly-doop-doop, doop-dee-doop-dee-doo, doodly-doop. 